Hi 7th graders, good morning. How are you all today? Today we are going to learn the very first lesson of your class 7 English NCRT book, The Three Questions by Leo Tolstoy. This story has been retold, that means it has been rewritten in a simple English for us to understand better. Children, look at this picture on the right. This is Count Lev Nikolaevich Tolstoy from Russia. He is the author of the story, The Three Questions. Lev Nikolaevich is his Russian name and in English he is called Leo Tolstoy. He was born on 9th September 1828 and passed away on 20th November 1910. To the left here I have a world map. Can you find Russia in this map? It is in the continent of Asia colored in purple. Leo Tolstoy was born in this country. See how big this country is? This is actually the largest country in the world and it is located in two continents namely Asia and in Europe. Leo Tolstoy's best known novels are War and Peace written in 1869 and Anna Karenina written in 1877. He was nominated for the Nobel Prize for five consecutive years from 1902 to 1906. I am sure that having watched some of the game and award shows that are tele telecasted in the television nowadays, you would all be very familiar with the word nominated, but I am going to explain it anyway. To nominate means to suggest someone's name for an honor or award. Leo Tolstoy was also nominated for Nobel Peace Prize in 1901, 1902 and 1910. But surprisingly, he was not awarded even one Nobel. And this still remains a subject of controversy. That means a matter of dispute or disagreement because he was one of the greatest authors of his time. Let's look at the meanings of some new words. Learning these words first will help us understand the story better. Our first word here is wise. Wise means intelligent. For example, you could say, my dad took a wise decision. Or, it is better to be wise than wealthy. And second word here is satisfy. Satisfy means to fulfill a need or, or desire. For example, if your marks are not good enough, then I would say, I am not satisfied with your marks, my dear. Throughout. Throughout means from beginning to the end of something. For example, if you get very good marks in the next exam, then I would say, I am proud of you, my baby. Keep it up throughout the year, okay? Next word is counsel. Counsel is a group of people who are chosen to make decisions or give advice. For example, in your school, you may have a student council. Who are they in a student council? There are many selected members like a school paper leader, an assistant school paper leader, club leader, sports leader and so on. So they would help and uh, they would discuss and help the management to take important decisions like deciding the theme for school exhibition or how many programs should be in the school annual day program. So that is a council. And then we have this word hermit. Look at this picture. This is a hermit. A hermit is a person who lives away from the society in a forest, spending most of his time in prayer and meditation because he wants to have an undisturbed connection with God. Our story begins with a king deep in thought. He wanted to be a good king who doesn't make many mistakes. He had some questions for which he didn't know the answer, but he strongly believed that if he found the answer, then he would never fail or then he would never make mistakes. Are you curious to know what these questions are? His first question was, what is the right time to begin something? Second, what is the most important thing to do? Third, which people should I listen to? These are the three questions that he had and he strongly believed that if he found the answer to these questions, then he would be a good king who never failed his subjects. 
When a king has a doubt, whose help does he seek to clear them? Ministers, right? But his ministers could not clear his doubts either. He sent messengers throughout the country to give an announcement to the people. The king promises a large sum of money to anyone who answers his questions. Messengers went from place to place and gave this announcement throughout the country. Hearing the king's announcement, many wise people from throughout the country came to meet the king and answer his questions. Welcome, O wise one. Please tell me, when is the time to begin something? And the first man said, Your Majesty, you should prepare a timetable and follow it very strictly. Then you can do everything at the right time perfectly. But another wise man said, No, no, Majesty, how can you decide everything in advance? You cannot do that, it's not possible. Then the king asked them, What is your idea, wise sir? And he said, You have to observe everything carefully. Do not waste your time. Do not involve in foolish pleasures or foolish pastimes like hunting, partying or dancing. Observe everything carefully and do whatever seems necessary at that time. And then, many more people came. And the king asked everyone, Do you have an answer for me? The first one said, Yes, my king. You cannot take all the important decisions yourself. You need a council of wise men. You need some intelligent men to advise you. But the second one disagreed. But king, some things could be urgent. You cannot wait for the decisions of others. You cannot wait for your council to make the decision. You have to decide everything. And the other person said, My king, to find out what is the right time to do something, you should know what happens in the future. If you know what happens in the future, then you can plan everything in advance. Only magicians will know what happens in the future. So I think you should go to the magicians to find out about the future. All their answers were so different and the king was not satisfied with their answers. He was very disappointed. So he said, all your answers are very different and not satisfactory. I cannot reward you for these answers. To his second question, what is the most important thing for me to do? One said, develop science. Another one said, go wage wars. And the other one said, worship God. The word wage has two meanings. One is salary or payment. For example, my daily wages are not even enough to meet the basic needs. But the other meaning for this word is to carry on with a war. For example, after culling a war, Ashoka decided not to wage any wars anymore. So, as I was saying, their replies were very different. To his second question, one man answered science. To his next question, which people should I listen to? One said doctors, another one said soldiers, and the other one said priests. So different and unsatisfactory and the king was very disappointed. He thought to himself, my most wise ministers and all the wise men in the country have failed to give me a solution. What am I going to do? How am I going to find answers to my questions? How am I going to be a good king? But then he got an idea. He once had heard that a very wise hermit lived in the woods. He has heard that the hermit was a very simple man and that he never came out of the woods. Woods means forest. The hermit only spoke to simple people. So the king decided to go and meet the hermit. He mounted his horse and said to meet the hermit. Mount. Mount means to get on a horse. But instead if you get on a bus or a train or a fly, then the word you have to use is bow. You could say I have boarded the bus. So our king mounted the horse and he said to meet the hermit. 
When he finally found the hermit's hut, he got down and asked this body god to wait with the horses far away and he walked alone to the hermit's hut because the hermit sees only simple people. When the king came near the hermit's hut, he saw the hermit digging the ground. He was preparing the ground for planting. When the hermit saw the king, he greeted him. Hello young man. And he continued his work. So the king said to him, O oh, wise hermit, I have three questions. I hope you could help me find answers to them. But the hermit didn't give him any reply and continued digging. So he proceeded to ask his questions. O oh, wise hermit, when is the right time for me to begin something? What is the most important thing for me to do? Which people should I listen to? The hermit listened very carefully but didn't give a reply. He just continued to dig and he looked weak and he said to the hermit, You look tired. Please let me help you at least. Children, that is so nice of the king, right? Even though he was a king, he was ready to take a spade and do hard manual work to help out the old hermit. This is one value we should inculcate. We should treat our elders with respect. If you are sitting in a bus and see an elderly person standing near you, get up and offer your seat to them. It's not an option, it's a must. It is disheartening to see these values fading nowadays. I see children sitting and chatting with friends or playing with their phones and buses while the elderly stand nearby without a place to sit. It doesn't matter at all how well we dress or how well we do our hair. All that matters is how well we conduct ourselves and how we treat others. These simple acts of kindness could bring us so much satisfaction. This is my favorite part of the story. When the king offered to help the hermit, which is your favorite part? Do let me know in the comment section because I love hearing from my kids. Sorry, sorry. So the sage gave his pay to the king and sat down thankfully. The king had dug two beds. After the king had done a lot of work, he stopped and then he looked at the sage and said, Oh, wise sir, please answer my questions and help me. When is the right time to begin something? What is the most important thing for me to do? Which people should I listen to? But the hermit didn't give a reply. He just said to the king, Okay, young man, you have done enough. Now you rest and let me work. But the king said, It's okay, I'll do it. And he continued digging. He dug and dug and hour passed and then two hours and finally when the sun went behind the trees, he asked the sage, Oh wise hermit, I have traveled so far and wide to seek your answer to help my, to my questions. If you cannot help me, please tell me, I will go away. But the hermit was not looking at him. He was looking at a man who was running towards them and then one of the three, the sage or the man or the king, one of the three fell down with his hand pressed to his stomach and blood gushed out. Who fell down? Who hurt him? What happened? Before we learn about that, let's read the passages that we have learned so far. Reading aloud improves your memory and pronunciation. It helps build word sound connection and enables you to read well with proper stress and intonation. So don't be shy and read aloud with me, okay? The thought came to a certain king that he would never fail if he knew three things. These three things were what is the right time to begin something? Which people should he listen to? What is the most important thing for him to do? The, the king therefore 
sent messengers throughout his kingdom promising a large sum of money to anyone who would answer these three questions many wise men came to the king but they all answered his questions differently in reply to the first question some said the king must prepare a timetable and then follow it strictly only in this way they said could he do everything at its proper time others said that it was impossible to decide in advance the right time for doing something the king should notice all that was going on avoid foolish pleasures and always do whatever seemed necessary at that time yet others said that the king needed a council of wise men who would help him act at the proper time this was because one man would find it impossible to decide correctly but then others said that there were some things which could be urgent these things could not wait for the decision of the council in order to decide the right time for doing something it is necessary to look into the future and only magicians magicians could do that the king therefore would have to go to magicians in their answers to the second question some said that the people most necessary to the king were his counselors others said the priests a few others chose the doctors and yet others said that his soldiers were the most necessary to the third question some said science others chose fighting and yet others religious worship as the answers to his questions were so different the king was not satisfied and gave no reward instead he decided to seek the advice of a certain hermit who was widely known for his wisdom the hermit lived in a wood which he never left he saw no one but simple people and so the king put on ordinary clothes before he reached the hermit's hut the king left his horse with his bodyguard 
and went alone. As the king came near the hermit's hut, he saw the hermit digging the ground in front of his hut. He greeted the king and continued digging. The hermit was old and weak and as he worked, he breathed heavily. The king went up to the hermit and said, I have come to you, wise hermit, to ask you to answer three questions. How can I learn to do the right thing at the right time? Who are the people I need most? And what affairs? Affairs means matters. And what affairs are the affairs that are most important? The hermit listened to the king but did not speak. He went on digging. You are tired, said the king. Let me take the spade and work in your place. Thanks, said the hermit, giving the king his spade. Then he sat on the ground. When the king had dug two beds, he stopped and repeated his questions. The hermit gave no answer, but stood up, stretching out his hand for the spade, and said, Now you rest and let me work. But the king did not give him the spade and continued to dig. One hour passed, then another. The sun went down behind the trees. And at last, the king stuck the spade into the ground and said, I came to you, wise man, for an answer to my questions. If you can give me no answer, tell me so and I will return home. Children, I really hope you enjoyed this first part of the story and that it was useful for you and you would come back for the second part. Until then, Kitty and I would be waiting by this window. Bye-bye. See you soon. And remember, love you all.